Game-changing features that only one company is doing. Backpacking clothing with functional ventilation is lacking and a bit outdated, with no real advances in technology aside from the material itself. Pit zips have been used for eons, with origins tracing all the way back to ancient Egypt. And for good reason. I know myself, a week or so ago, I was getting really sweaty when I was building a pyramid. A tried and true design that works, but it ain't got shit on this. Here's four different things Outdoor Vitals offers with their new tech, and then we're gonna talk about their brand new CS40 backpack that I've been testing for a little while, but just dropped in the market for the common folk. No sponsors in this video, just awesome gear. Hiking in anything heavier than a t-shirt or base layer has always been an issue for me, especially when it's a little nipply out. Nipply? Nipple. Nippy. I said nipple. If I start hiking in a mid-layer, I heat up, start sweating, and do what I've always referred to as the one-mile shed. But with the Ventus, I could probably get a mile and a half. An extremely light hoodie, this is described as an active mid-layer. The ventilation of this hoodie is impressive. Is that why they call it the Ventus? It vents us? It's not. It's the Latin word for wind, but I was close. My grandpa used to have a one mile shed. He, you can just keep tons of stuff in there. He had shovels, rakes, and tons of hoes. <laughs> Garden hose? What do you think I was talking about? Jeez. It uses a perforated non-insulated material in the underarm here that's not only like really generous in size, but super functional and helping to minimize the sweat in areas that we all do. I've always appreciated pit zips on jackets, but I've always thought the design could be improved. Even when unzipped, they don't really vent that much because the material doesn't really like open up. And honestly, you never really see these on mid layers or normally only on rain jackets because they need the most help with breathability because they don't breathe. I don't care what they say. Rain jackets breathe like a whore in church. They're sweaty. That's not right. When I first got this jacket, I really wish that it had side pockets. Now, upon thinking this, I remembered that I've actually never backpacked in a mid-layer that ever had side pockets, not once. This was a common opinion though, and Outdoor Vitals came out and said that that's not what the Ventus is. The Ventus is meant to be a super lightweight, active mid-layer. I know it sounds crazy, Maybe just use the pockets in your pants. Whoa, this has a hidden pocket that it folds up into. I'm on their site. How did I not know this? It's hidden very well. Oh, no, it's not. It's right inside the quarter zip. It's got a little mesh pocket in there, but I'm not gonna lie, I actually completely forgot that this even had any pockets. Yeah, yeah, this just became way cooler. Now, how do you make the Ventus even better? You add a full zip, side pockets, and the same but thicker 3D effects insulation. Then you have the Vario. The 3D effects insulation is a full sheet, so that means no cooled spots like you get with traditional down jackets. Synthetic insulation and a DWR coating is a luxury to have in wet weather after years of the paranoia associated with trying to keep a down jacket dry. I've had this thing for a couple years now. Last year was my primary winter jacket, and it's impressive how warm this thing is, especially knowing that it only weighs nine ounces. I do wish I had the newly discovered hidden pocket that the Ventus does. But I always roll it up into the hood and it's still like fairly small. The Vario has the same type of ventilation as the Ventus, just in a slightly smaller area. And I'll admit, I was a little skeptical of this. Just the idea of having holes in my jacket seemed like it might be too much ventilation. I'm cold. But it really isn't even in colder temperatures. Most of the time your arms are down, kind of blocking the wind and it's actually kind of nice to have that extra breathability around camp, hiking around and doing camp chores. Always remember, if you sweat, you die. One thing to note is this is an athletic fit, so if you're a little bit out of shape, you might want to find another coat. I'm just kidding. That just means they run a little bit tighter. So if you're between two sizes like I am, just go with the larger size or start working out. You know, there's a beast inside you. A beast inside you that looks great in an athletic cut. One thing I really want to add is I think the fit and style of this jacket is like perfect. So I've used a Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer, one of the industry standard backpacking coats for years. I like the fit of this way more and overall I just think it's more comfortable. Not to mention I can actually hike in it when it's cold. Getting a down jacket sweaty or wet is really dangerous because they take forever to dry out. And if you're on a cold trip, it probably won't. Plus I don't have to walk around all gingerly avoiding every branch I see because that thing's a delicate flower, and it sucks when it's wet. I don't hike in pants often, normally only when it's really cold out. Whoa! I mean, I wear shorts. You people today, I tell ya. But if you want more coverage than shorts, these are a great option. They're a really comfortable, like, kind of stretchy material, and they're not overly baggy like a lot of hiking pants out there. But let's get to ventilation. 
thigh zips. Now I've seen these in pants before, but it's worth mentioning today, and they're fairly large and have a really nice inner mesh. See, you can't even tell that my underwear are pink, blue. Let's skip this part. These are great to get the air flowing in your drawers. I do wish that they had like some type of mesh in the crotchal region. That would be nice. But I see why they don't. I for one only wear full length pants in the winter and that could get a bit drafty. I have other hiking pants that have a ventilated crotch, but come on, that ain't gonna do shit. Now if you prefer shorts, they do have the Saw 2 Adventure short that has the same comfort or you can get my top pick. When I first got my hands on these, this was literally my reaction. All right, material's nice. Oh, it's got normal pockets. A lot of running shorts don't have that. That's good. And yes, ventilation, baby. I mean, look at the airflow potential. Just look at it. Look at that. That's all mesh, the whole crotch. I don't really need to explain why extra ventilation is a good thing. It just, it, it makes me happy. And that makes two of us. Thank you. I always backpack in running shorts and no other hiking like gear company has ever really produced any shorts that I've liked. My favorite feature about these is that they're available with or without a liner. Most running shorts come with a liner, but it's kind of pointless to have that if you're going to wear underwear. But here's a little pro tip. Don't wear underwear. If it's hot out, I usually don't. It's just one more layer to get soaked with sweat and it's just gross after a few days, and I don't bring extra clothes. Without underwear, everything just breathes better and it stays cooler and drier. But be courteous to your fellow hikers and wear shorts with a liner. You know, keep everything where it's supposed to be. You know, especially in cactus country. Whew, that was a fun day. These are a seven inch inseam and they're considered a shorter short by normal people standards and they actually come down a little bit in the back too to help keep the sun off of the back of the knee. Hey, make sure you edit that out. A really functional feature if you're hiking in a lot of exposure because that's one place that usually doesn't get a lot of sun and it's one of the worst places to burn because of the constant bending and you might need leg mobility on the trail. Now, I could still make some changes to these. Really, I just want a five inch inseam. I want to show off my thighs. Not really, I just run in fives and the airflow is addicting. These just came out, so maybe someday they'll offer them in fives if I harass them enough. I'll start now. Tayson. Bro, come on dog. I need some fives. Jason, I need some fives. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> They're too long. It's too hot. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> I've been wearing these things all summer. I think they're great. If you're new to short shorts, I think they're a good like gateway short. Nothing too short that's gonna make you feel weird about going in public, just slightly. And just a heads up, everything I'm talking about in this video, I'm gonna link in the description below. That way you guys can easily go check it out for yourself. All right, the CS40 backpack. You've been patient, unless you skipped ahead to this part of the video. For shame. The CS40 was just released August of 2023 and it's got some great features. It's a 40 liter bag weighing in at 27 ounces. It's ultra weave fabric with carbon fiber stays, hence CS in the name. This is actually the first pack I've ever had that didn't have aluminum stays. Ultra is still a fairly new pack material. So just to recap, it's six times more abrasion resistant than DCF, just as light and twice as strong. A lot of features of this I really enjoy and there's a few that I would change. I love the side pocket size, easily fits two plus water bottles. The straps are not only cool looking but they're comfortable because they're soft i measured them at two and three quarter inches where they rest on your shoulder and then they taper down smaller in the front which not a lot of backpacks do also it has load lifter straps which you don't often see on ultralight style backpacks these can be helpful if you carry a taller heavier load the large pocket on the front isn't huge but it's sufficient and holds everything in place nicely the thick back padding gives you nice peace of mind so you don't feel the contents in your pack jamming into your spine it's definitely designed with airflow in mind and I find it really comfortable. I do wish it came in other colors other than white. Not that I don't like it. I mean, most of my packs are white. It's just, white's my thing. Now everyone's gonna have one. <laughs> just kidding. But seriously. The hip belt pockets are kind of small. They do work good one-handed though, and paired with the shoulder strap pocket that I use and highly recommend, it's plenty of accessible storage. I've had this pack for almost a year now during its testing phase and I've really enjoyed it. Outdoor Vitals actually invited me out to test this thing out during their 2023 spring media trip. Sure beats 38 degree Cleveland. Which consisted of world renowned writers from Backpacker Magazine, Outside Mag, Popular Mechanics, just to name a few. Now I know you're probably wondering, Bryce, where, where do you fit in here? Why'd they invite you? Well, 
They supplied us with tons of gear to test out backpacking in Zion National Park in Utah, as well as giving us a thorough briefing on the concept and design of each of their products. Except for my limited run OV hat here. <laughs> I don't know if you're doing us better with this hat thing or worse. <laughs> I'm repping. I want to go over more of their gear in the future, especially the 40th tent, which I was most excited to try going into this, but that's going to have to wait for another video, so you should probably subscribe so you don't miss that, because... I'm gonna tear that thing apart. So after backpacking in Utah with Outdoor Vitals, getting to know their team members, their values, and after a heated four hour long ultimate ping pong match, I learned that I'm not very good at ping pong. <laughs> it's worth your time to at least check them out. Except for the limited run hat. <laughs> or if you wanna see the Vario in action on probably the most beautiful hike I'll ever get to do, click here, subscribe, join the 100K club. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. That's it. Thanks for watching.